Hi, my name is Nayland Appena. I'm a specialist gynaecologist in Hamilton in New Zealand. Welcome to my series of educational videos in gynaecology. Today we're going to talk about endometriosis. Just what is endometriosis? Endometriosis is a condition where the lining of the womb is found in areas outside the uterus. This is usually found in the pelvis, but has been found as far away as the lungs and the brain. It responds to female hormones the same way as the lining of the uterus itself, which means that when you have a period, you bleed from these areas as well. This blood irritates the peritoneum causing pain, and also leads to the scarring and adhesions associated with endometriosis. Endometriosis within the muscle of the uterus is called adenomyosis. What causes endometriosis? There are several theories behind the cause of endometriosis. The two thought to be most likely are retrograde menstruation or back bleeding and silomic metaplasia. Retrograde menstruation or back bleeding. This is when the blood passes back through the tubes into the abdominal cavity. Slomic metaplasia, a big word to mean the lining of the abdominal cavity, called the peritoneum, which has the ability to change into any type of cell and changes into endometriotic cells. Other causes include vascular and lymphatic spread. The endometriotic cells get into the bloodstream at the time of your period and may lodge anywhere in the body. Surgery. Surgery in the uterus, such as caesarean sections, may result in the endometrium being deposited in areas outside of the uterus. The commonest area for this is just under the umbilicus, which usually occurs with laparoscopic surgery. Immune system problems. This may be the underlying cause for endometriosis. Not everybody who has back bleeding gets endometriosis. It is my opinion that it is the inability of the body to recognize these cells as being in an abnormal area that allows these cells to proliferate. What are the symptoms of endometriosis? There are a number of symptoms that have been attributed to endometriosis. However, the classic triad of pelvic pain, painful periods, and pain with intercourse are the commonest symptoms. Other symptoms include dyskesia which is pain or difficulty in passing bowel motions. Are there any tests for endometriosis? Currently, there are no diagnostic tests that can be used to confirm endometriosis. There is much research going on in this field, and some blood tests are being investigated. Checking the lining of the uterus for nerve fibers has been encouraging. However, currently, there is no substitute for a laparoscopy. Ultrasound may help, where there are endometriotic cysts or nodules. At the Women's Health Centre, I perform transvaginal ultrasounds, and these give further information, even if normal, when pain may be elicited by pressure in certain areas on specific pelvic organs. MRIs may also help, specifically when bowel involvement is suspected, and can give an indication of the depth of endometriosis. Is there a genetic component? Much research is being carried out with gene testing. There is sufficient evidence that there is a genetic tendency for endometriosis. Research does show that first degree relatives of women with endometriosis have a sevenfold increased risk of developing the disease. So, how is endometriosis graded? Endometriosis is graded from stage 1 to stage 4, with stage 1 being minimal endometriosis, stage 2 being mild endometriosis. Stage 3 being moderate endometriosis, including endometriomas, and stage 4 being severe, deep, infiltrative endometriosis. The stage of endometriosis is clinical and is based on the location, amount, depth, and size of the endometrial implants. Specific criteria include the extent of the spread of the implants, the involvement of adjacent pelvic structures, the extent of pelvic adhesions, and blockage of the fallopian tubes. 
The stage of endometriosis does not necessarily reflect the level of pain experienced, risk of infertility, or symptoms present. So how is endometriosis treated? It is difficult to control endometriosis, and patients have to be individualized. In the past, surgeons would just have cauterized, diatomied, or lasered the endometriosis. However, this only treated the visible endometriosis and microscopic endometriosis in adjacent areas, or deeper endometriosis, remained untreated, and symptoms returned fairly quickly. We now perform complete excision of the endometriosis and infusion of fluids to try to prevent adhesion formation. Up to 80% of women remain symptom-free for more than five years with this treatment. However, the 20% who do get it back tend to get recurrence fairly quickly, within the first two years. Hysterectomy and oophorectomy. A gynecologist may offer you a hysterectomy because of your endometriosis. This, however, does not guarantee that you will be symptom-free. A hysterectomy will only guarantee that you will stop having periods. Obviously, this stops the cramps that go with menstruation. All endometriotic implants must also be removed at the time. Similarly, removing the ovaries without removing the implants will not necessarily cure you of your symptoms. In my experience, even with all the endometriosis removed at the time of hysterectomy, only about 70 to 80% of women will remain symptom-free. It is my opinion that the type of endometriosis caused by back bleeding is the type that is cured. But the type caused by silomic metaplasia can be widespread, and this is the type that recurs. In this case, removing of the implants together with removing of the ovaries may help. But one should not undertake this lightly without understanding the effects of a surgically induced menopause, especially in young women. Other treatments include using the combined oral contraceptive pill without the sugar pills. By not taking the sugar pills, you will not have a period. Pain tends to occur at the time of periods, therefore suppressing periods may help with pain. I am unsure if this halts the progression of the disease, and this certainly does not work for advanced endometriosis. Gonadotrophin-releasing agonists. These shut the ovaries down and are therefore used as an option for treatment, stopping periods completely. They may be taken by inhalation, as an injection, or as an implant. More information may be found on our website. More recently, treatment for recurrent symptoms of endometriosis have included tricyclic antidepressants. Not for its antidepressant effect, but because of its effect on nerve transmission. Gabapentin, which is used to treat neurogenic pain, has also been extremely successful. More information on this is also available on our website. The Marina. The Marina is an intrauterine contraceptive device which slowly releases the hormone progesterone into the pelvic area. The progesterone thins the lining of the uterus, causing women to have little or no periods. In the same way, it thins endometriosis and slows the progression of the disease. It lasts for up to five years. Other treatments still used, but not as regularly. Progestogens. These used to be used a lot before the advent of the marina. Taken orally, commonly causes bloating and also some androgenic, that is male hormone, side effects. It works by thinning the endometriosis, but because it is taken orally, has effects throughout the body, called systemic effects. Unlike the marina, which is limited to the pelvis. Danazole. This used to be used a lot, before the advent of gonadotrophin-releasing hormone agonists. It is poorly tolerated and has a very high dropout rate. It causes male hormone effects, including deepening of the voice, abnormal hair growth, reduced breast size, water retention, weight gain, acne, irregular vaginal bleeding, and muscle cramps. Depo-Provera. This is an injectable long-acting progestogen, which is still used by some. I occasionally use this in older women who have completed their families. I do not use Depo in younger women because of the time it takes to return to ovulation. Although most women on Depo Provera have no periods, if irregular bleeding does develop, it can be incredibly difficult to get on top of. Jadal, the Implanon, or other progesterone implants. In my experience, a number of patients on these have developed irregular bleeding 
and have stopped using these as treatment for endometriosis unless specifically asked for by patients. These are relatively usually easy to insert and remove, but does involve a small surgical procedure. There have been times when they are extremely difficult to find and remove. They also have the systemic effects mentioned earlier. Pregnancy. Many women with endometriosis have difficulty conceiving. However, in those that do conceive, it has been observed that endometriosis sometimes regresses. It is felt that the hormonal environment produced by pregnancy inhibits the disease. The condition usually returns after pregnancy. Other unproven treatments. There is no convincing scientific evidence regarding the following. However, there are a number of anecdotal stories, and some patients swear by these. They include progesterone creams, avoidance of things like coffee and chocolate, etc., exercise, Disclaimer. Without having examined you personally, it is impossible for me to make a diagnosis or advise treatment. All information provided here is generalized and for educational purposes only, and decisions based on this should not be made without consulting your own medical professional. I assume no responsibility for you taking advice rendered here without me having had a physical consultation with you. I assume no responsibility for you following advice rendered here without me having had a physical consultation with you.